Hello and welcome to the Niche Podcast for Friday, July 12th, 2013. I'm Jonathan Stark. And I'm Kelly Shaver. And we're here to talk about building apps that run everywhere. This week, we continue with part four, hopefully the final part, of our screencast on how to build a REST API with Rails. If you are listening to the audio-only version of the podcast, you can find the video by visiting niche.cc and looking for episode 65. Please stay tuned. The Niche Podcast is next. Oh, episode 65. Wow. They haven't run us off the internet yet. <laughs> exactly. Uh, tell you, the, the amount of stuff I've learned since we started this series just makes me want to... Start over. Learned and changed since we started this series just makes me want to start over, yes. Yeah. Well, there's nothing like teaching to uh, help you yeah. learn. Yeah, and since Rails 4 came out, it's caused me to really go back and re-examine how I do some of the stuff. And, and it not only just because of the changes that came out that were in Rails 4, but it, it just seemed like a good time to do it anyway. And, and yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize now for the embarrassing RSpec <laughs> files. And, yeah, anyway. Well, learning the hard way. But there's tons of good stuff in there. I know that I am. I could literally uh, build a Rails API, uh, a REST API with Rails now just by following along the screencast. So that's a huge win because I just can't seem to get started with Rails. <laughs> <laughs> I always go back to. I always fail over to PHP. No, stop it. I know. You have to get a fold up newspaper or something. Yeah, this well, the project we're working on now, I swear I'm going to use Rails as soon as I get the proof of concept done with PHP. <laughs> That's what happens. I do the proof of concept with PHP and then it's working. So, anyway. Yeah, but, you should do your proof of concept in like Sinatra. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so where did we leave off? We left off. Wait, wait, wait you mean the project that I'm building a, a, a Rails API, API for? for? Yes. No, 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 I'm not going to do it. No, I'm not going to do it with PHP. I I tell you right now, I'm doing it in HTML with JavaScript. There you go. That's the way to go. Right. So more about that probably next week. Yes. This week, we are going to come hell or high water, and I do have high water here, (laughs) Um, torrential flooding in Rhode Island. Yes. Um, We are going to wrap up this four-part series. All right, so uh, we left off last week on another cliffhanger where, was it the uh, authentication tests were telling us that we couldn't log out? Yes. Cool. Here, I have the little test here. And it was saying that we could not log out, and this turned out to be an, an error actually in the in the RSpec test and not in the code, and it's it's one of those that just makes you, like, whack yourself in the face when you find it. <laughs> I don't know how well you can see my screen here, but... Yep, I can see it. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, that needs to be in. I forgot the HTTP prefix on the, on the authorization header. It needs to be there. <laughs> there we go. We can log out now. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> What's another one we hunted around for and hunted around for and then hung up and finished the call? And I was like, oh, no! Yeah. It's always yeah. like that. Always different when someone's watching. Yeah. And actually, um, like I said, I've been doing a lot of reading uh, reading up on RSpec and best practices for test writing and, and things like that. And uh, you've probably seen the, the new tests that I have on our other the project. A lot of this, the headers and, and things like that are abstracted out of the tests themselves. Oh. So, I mean, I'd, I'd love to just like do do a thing on testing sometime, but... I, yeah. I need to be better still before I do that. Yeah. <laughs> or I'll well, end up embarrassing myself again two weeks later. That's the way it goes. Yep. I'm always amazed by how dumb I was two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> All right, great. At least, so, it's, at least it's making progress continually, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, right. at the end of all this, we should post the code so people can actually yeah. jumpstart themselves. Yeah. We should. Um, okay, so... Uh, um, what's next? What should we What should we do next? We've, I think next we have we can just move on to entries. Okay, so we've got so, so right better. now we've got all of our um, 
everything's passing the test, so we could yeah. theoretically ping the API at this point, or no? Yeah. Do you want to do that just so we can just kind of demonstrate? Demonstrate, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, we've got like a, a discrete piece of functionality put together. So Rails S to start the server. Mm -hmm. Get your fancy polished rocks in the background. Yeah. what I'm going to do with them when they're all done other than just have them take up space but hey <laughs> right. local host did we call that we could call that person didn't we yeah oh interesting this is good to see because this isn't the way I would have done it yeah you'd put you put it in the body yeah so yeah you can you can do it in the even though you're going to post. Yeah. I did not realize that. I, th I was, well, of course, I'm thinking about PHP. In PHP, those would come in in the get, in the get or super global array instead of the post. Even yeah. in anything you post, in fact, you could post the same things in the body and you'd get a version of each. Yeah. I think I'm right about that. Pretty sure I'm right about that. But yeah, uh, and... look, this is, this is kind of cool because it makes it a little bit easier to uh, I don't know if it's easier it's the same amount of typing but somehow it's a little easier to uh, reuse yeah I and mean, if you want to test it again you just select yeah, it from your from list history. Of, yeah, 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 cool. yeah or just paste it into a file or whatever yep. um, and as we discovered or as we uh, so <laughs> yesterday you yeah. can as you discovered yesterday you can put um, JSON data in the request body, you just have to set your um, content type to application JSON header yeah. as well. Set your content type header as well. Yes, and this is the this is the little um, graphical HTTP client that we've linked to a couple of times. Yeah, it's still my favorite one. Yeah, it's not perfect, but I like it. And so everyone crosses their fingers. Oh, well, yeah. that did not create a person. <laughs> First name, last name, email. Yeah, I wonder if the we might be. Are you thinking of the um um? I wonder what the, if the constraints are different for Kilo than they are for the other project we're working on. Yeah, I bet they are. Yeah. So jump back into person. Um, Email, first name, last name, password. I'm not returning any errors on that, just because I'm just the way it's set up. Um, I bet that's a duplicate entry. Oh. I bet I already have a. So what did you you just? Oh, nice. I just reset. DB the reset. Oh, database. that's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. There we go. And normally in production, you'd want to return error. You'd want to return the array, the error array that says that's a duplicate and all that stuff. But yeah. just to just to keep things quick and simple here. Excellent, excellent. So just to recap, you do have to put in the accept application JSON header in there. Yes. And you could use uh, JSON in the request body if you also have the content type header also set to application JSON. Yes. And as I discovered yesterday, it does have to be applica application JSON. Text JSON doesn't work. Interesting. I I had I had I had wondered about that since we were um, <clears throat> you know, basically just just sending a JSON object. If I could send it as text JSON, but it doesn't. It has to be application. Gotcha. All right. Cool. Which, Good to know. So we officially have a working API to officially have yep to create people. Yep. <clears throat> We do. As we saw here, it could use some error reporting. Yes. But and it does return an access token. And then what you would do is, in your in your client, if you were using this API, you'd capture the access token. 
and use it for all subsequent requests. So like if you're going to delete this person. Right. In fact, let's let's go ahead and do that and we can log out cool. or delete the person. And the token goes in authorization. person is deleted. Ta-da! Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> That's awesome. All right, sweet. So now uh, we can go do entries and, and that's the last piece of this API. Yes. And we're going to kind of rush through entries to get them done today, I think. But yeah, it's pretty straight. I mean, uh, yeah. it's a lot of cut and paste, I presume, from person, different fields and stuff, but yeah, might make a nice recap. I mean, really, that the whole the whole bunch of videos we did to create the person, you almost have to do that in every single API. Yeah. It's the same like dance of, you know, the special case, whether you call it user account or whatever you want to call it. But there needs to be some kind yeah. of like authentication thing that you know they don't have to be authenticated to create an account or a person record, and then the token comes back, and you know, da -da -da -da, it's always the same every single time. Yeah, yeah. I mean standard <laughs> yeah all right in fact cool. I, I don't have an app made that's just that but I've thought many times I should make an app that's just that <laughs> and I yeah. can just clone it to start with yeah exactly <laughs> all right so my phone just won't stop oh see it's I'm getting weather alerts because of the biblical flood oh yeah yeah yeah, flash flood warnings like crazy. Telling you to get your, get your um. Actually, they get it says elevate, <laughs> elevate your furnace. Nice. <laughs> I'm supposed to elevate my furnace. <laughs> nice. And we have a title. Elevate your house. Yeah. <laughs> that one the other day about extremely dangerous flash flood warnings and yeah, we have it. Okay. <laughs> Yes. So entry string calories. So yep. the concept here is entries. You you know you whatever you do bagel and you put in like four hundred calories or whatever. Yeah. On a particular yeah, so date associated with a particular person record. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're gonna have um we're gonna have a kind there, so it can be either food or exercise. Gotcha. Yep. Okay, so that just created a bunch of stuff. Is there anything we want to delete, or are we just going to go with it? Well, we don't need the attribute adder, adder accessible because we're using the has secure parameters gem, mm -hmm. which is now the default in Rails 4. Interesting. And Real, Rails 4 has some nice set because it's the default. It has some nice little um, generators when you create scaffolding and all that. It it does the does the um the generation of the methods, controller methods, and things for you. So. Yeah. Cool. Get another reason to, to upgrade. Yeah. Okay, well first we're gonna go actually we're gonna go into person here before I forget to do it. As many entries. Yeah. As many entries. And then we're gonna go to Yep. Love it. That's one of my favorite things about Rails. Oops, yeah. blings too. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> bling. <laughs> All right. I think I've got in here. I've got. Yeah. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna copy that. Ad. Uh. I should also mention there is 
there's an alternate syntax uh, in Ruby 1.9.3, which I like better, and you'll probably like better too. Yes, I do. Yes. But for consistency, I'm going to annoy you. Yeah. It also, it does raise another, like, uh, colons everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Thing. Yeah, but uh, it, to me, it feels feels cleaner, especially when you're creating objects and, and hashes and things like that. It, feel, it feels more, more JSON-y. Yeah, I hate the, the fat arrow because it's a pain to type. Yeah. It's like, like com key combinations and, and you're using, you do them all the time and it's like, come on. Uh, inclusion. I'm going to send you some WD-40 for that chair. I know. <laughs> or is, is that your back? <laughs> That's yeah. what my back sounds like. Oh. Inclusion. In. Oh, if I could type. Man. <laughs> God. Damn you, autocorrect. What's it? What are you trying to do here? Inclusion. Oh, so you're basically saying it has to be one or the other. It has to be one of those three, yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> and what's the percent syntax there? Uh, that just takes that whole list and explodes it into an array. Nice. Just a, a quick way of creating arrays. That is cool. Assuming they're all separated by space. Right. If you had elements that, do you know if you had elements that had a space in the name, would, would you quote them or use commas or something? Uh, you know, I don't know. I've never tried it. Probably wouldn't use that syntax at all if you had to do that. Yeah, I'd probably just use a different syntax. Mm. I just, uh, like, I, I like it for, like, quick, small. Right, right, yeah, this is a perfect case for that. Cool. Yes. And then, okay, that should be all of our validations. Um, this yeah, is so great. Like, to... coming in, it'd be so great to, to come into something like, a, you know, you inherit a project from somebody. Just come in and read this. It's, like, so self-documenting. Yeah. going to do here is we're going to set the um the data value and we're going to check to see if it's present and if it is it with chronic so that way you can pass in things like today and yesterday and oh cool yeah that sort of thing for the date or 2 p.m so wait if you're if what are you checking for here um i'm gonna make sure like the um the dated variable mm -hmm. uh if you pass if you pass dated um, when you create, when you create oh, an entry, it's going to, it's going to take that, that string, uh, whatever it is that you pass, be it, be it an actual date string or the word today or, uh, like 10 AM or something like that. And, it, and it's going to parse it with chronic, which mm -hmm. is a, a gem we're using for date parsing. Okay. And it's going to, going to set the, um, set the date to that value. Otherwise it's going to just set the date to the time of the post. Gotcha. The, mm -hmm. uh, and if I pass nothing, and if you pa if you pass nothing, it's going to set the time to um to now to w to when you create the post. Gotcha. When you okay. create when you create the entry, and you want to set why and why are you using the word dated? Um, because that's the name of the field in the database. Okay. Let's see here in our. In our migration here, we're calling it dated. Oh, 
Okay, that was throwing me. Because it's not really a, it's not really a creation time or anything like that. Because it can be, you can create something today for something you ate yesterday. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah. I see what you mean. So this entry is dated. Right. Okay. I was I was expecting it to be a boolean. Like, is, oh, does it? Is it dated? Or, uh, yeah, yeah. Does it have a date or not? That's where I thought you were going with that. Sorry. No. Sorry. Okay. And I'm just gonna clean that up because I'm picky about formatting. <laughs> okay. So that's our model. Yep. Cool. It belongs to a person. Person has many. He has some like really good date tips there. Yeah. I wouldn't have no, known where to start there. Yeah, chronic the formatting I, and parsing. I'll have to have to link to chronic in the show notes. I like it a lot. It's a just a, a lot of like plain text parsing into dates. And nice. It's pretty smart about it. So. And that's in the gem file. It's listed in the gem file. Uh, it should be. We should probably check that, huh? <laughs> chronic. Yep, there it is. Cool. Okay, so that is our model. Let's go ahead and migrate our database. Do you want to test the model, or do you want to go ahead and do the controller? Um, let's just plow. Let's do the controller. Just and plow. Then, yeah, things blow up. Maybe completely. skip the last set of tests since we run through it once. <laughs> let's just not do tests and assume it works. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that. All right, so now Rails G controller entries index show create update destroy. So those are going to yeah. be our, our methods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it created a lot of ERB and and files and RSpec files and things like that that we won't need. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you may actually find it easier to just manually create a controller, but whatever, you can always delete things too. So. Yep, yep, either way. <laughs> Whoa! Max screen! <laughs> Darn you, two-finger swipe. <laughs> no kidding. Okay, so here we have our entries controller. And we need to... Since you can't mess with your entries unless you're logged in, mm -hmm. or require authentication. And that corresponds to something we wrote elsewhere, or we're going to write? Uh, no, we have written that elsewhere. That is our... That must be in... Uh, I believe it's in the application. application controller, yeah. Yeah, require auth right there in the application controller. Sweet, okay. And we're also going to go ahead... You do a little thing here, verify access. I'm going to make a um, make a method, <clears throat> a private method down here in the controller to make sure that the the item we're editing actually belongs to us. Mm -hmm. And you could skip all of this in by uh, instead of acting on an ID, just act on you know, or finding an ID. Instead of finding uh, globally by the ID, you could just search within the person's own entries. Right, so you, like, you search right, for two but things. If you, right, but if you set it up like this, um, then that lets you go in and, and extend it later to add like an administrative role, because then all you have to modify is this um, like this verify access method. Right. So in case that didn't make sense to the dear listener, you you could just when you're looking for the entry, let's say somebody says I want to delete delete this entry, you could just search for any records that had the entry ID, but also have the foreign key for the person who's logged in. And if it's if it doesn't belong to the person who's logged in, the record won't be found because their foreign key won't be in it. Right. So, yeah. So that that is definitely one way to do it. But I like your way better because of, for exactly the reason you stated, which is which is you you know this is a trivial API, but in a more complex thing, you're probably gonna have multiple levels of users, and it's not as simple as 
So whoever yeah, created the record owns yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, like for something simple like this, normally, you know, I would I would just search within the person's entries, but mm -hmm. you know, just kind of demonstrate adding it, adding an admin route here. Mm -hmm. So before we do, and actually before we do our controller actions, um, I'm gonna go ahead and and set up some of that stuff. So. Okay. And here I'm setting the model parameters. And if you remember, we did the same thing. Same thing in the people controller, and that is um, uh, that's our has secure parameters instead of um, attribute accessible. Gotcha. So these are the things in the model that somebody can right. read, right? Right, actually. Is it read, right, or just right? I forget. Uh, right. Yeah, it's your it's your protection from mass assignment action and all that stuff. So, um, we have name, kind, calories dated. Is that it? Um, yeah, because yeah, right now, fine. right now, I'm just gonna set I yeah you know, we're gonna set ID based on creator. Mm -hmm. And again, you could you could extend this like if you had an admin role. Then you could allow a person ID to be passed. Otherwise, if they're not an administrator, you just use the ID of, of their ID so they can only create for themselves. Right. That kind of thing. So that that was the reason for the switch um, away from from the adder accessible to um, secure parameters because it gives you a lot more flexibility to to, to do things like that. Mm, okay. And here we're going to do our verify access. And this actually is a little complicated, so rather than trying to do it from memory or look off of something else, I'm going to paste it in from some existing code, and then we'll just run through it if that's okay with you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The... Um, QuickTime's making my screen lag a little bit. All right. Okay. So if we can walk through this, if params, uh -huh. if the action is indexed, yeah, we're index. trying to list uh, the entries, right? Right, right. And we're actually gonna have. We're actually gonna. We think we'll have. Um, well, let me let me go ahead. And, let's go ahead and actually let's go ahead and do our routes first because I think that's gonna affect it here. Okay. So I've got entries. I believe that's that's set up for entries nested under person. And I need to clean up that routes file anyway. So yeah, we've got entries nested under a person here. Um, so let's actually let's go into. Um, so what does that mean that the entries will get returned with the person record? If... Yeah, we need to clean all this up. Um, Yeah, entries is nested under under person, so the routes are like person slash person ID entries. That index route is nested under person. Oh, I see. So, like you would do. Yep. Entries. Like you okay. couldn't. You couldn't. Like yeah. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to go straight to entries. Yeah. Unless you had so, an admin. Right. So, that's what this is doing. If you're um. If the action is index, then you're looking up um, the person based on the person ID. I see. So that's why that that's why person ID will exist, even though we're not passing it. It's in the URL. Right. I mean, we're not not passing it as like a 
as a right. Uh, like we're not string. posting it or anything. Like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's in the URL. The person mm -hmm. ID is going to be in the URL. Mm -hmm. And here, here we're making sure they match because, as I said, right now we're restricting it to you can only view yourself. Mm -hmm. But if you wanted to let other people like view, if you wanted to let people view someone else's calories, you could just. You know, like they don't have to identify uh, the ID they're authenticated as, and and the person don't have to match mm -hmm. like that kind of thing. So unless authenticated as ID, and that exists in the app that was created at login time. Yeah. Uh, equals the person ID that came in the URL. Unless unless confuses me. So it, it's if not right. Yeah. I gotta get used to that. Unless these things are equal, then yeah, that confuses me. I gotta, get, I gotta get used to that. It makes sense when I think about it, but it's not it's not natural. It makes sense when you think about it, but when you're just reading it, it's like, huh, wait, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like a block that, you know, it's a not block. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, I could easily change that to if and then do not equals. Right. And yeah, so if we're doing an index action, then we look it up by the person ID. If we're not doing an index action, then we're looking on a, a specific entry. So mm -hmm. we find the entry by its per, by its uh, ID, and then we check the um, the entry's person ID against the authenticated person. Okay, and it's interesting there that uh, the 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 online thirty four. Mm -hmm. You are using params colon ID and not params colon entry ID. You see how like um like, oh as versus person ID up there and yeah. entry ID below. Yeah, the the model the model that you're you're affecting, I guess the controller that you're affecting is always it's always going to be ID. Yeah, it make that makes sense. Yeah, and it makes it a lot easier to cut and paste code. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So then that is. I noticed in on on line thirty two you don't have and return, but on line thirty seven you do. Oh, I should. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, a render action does not does not stop things from parsing mm -hmm. or from rails from from doing things, mm -hmm. but you can't have you can't have multiple renders or redirects firing in the same action so if you do that and return then it will go ahead and just like 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 okay that's that's the end of it you we're know done. we're done here yeah, we're done we're done here yeah. all right sweet so that is verify access okay so back up to line four we're saying all right before we filter verify access except on create because yes. it won't match you can right right I'm just gonna limit that to the first 100 entries, just gotcha. because. I mean, you don't have to, but mm -hmm. I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And can you sort them descending by date? Yeah. Date head. Yeah. Actually, you can. You can also do. Yeah. Actually, we'll just do that instead. Cool. And that, what was it, uh, person dot order? We don't have to tell it. That's it. Person dot all dot order. Um, I can't. You could you could do that, but I believe the all is not necessary. But that may have been something that changed in Rails four. Okay. So we'll try it and see. Cool. But yeah, that's gonna. Oh, oh no no, you're right. I need to tell it to find entries, not people, not. Yeah, okay, that's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, And, of course, person is our, our person that was set down here. Yep. And so if we, if we 
took out those before filters, would we have no person? If we, yeah, if we took out those before filters, we'd have no person, and we'd have to do like this this person person find uh, person ID. We'd have to do it up here in the index action. Mm -hmm, okay. Yeah. And here we're just going to show the entry because we've already we've already looked it up down below. Gotcha. And here. That's so weird, though. So the entry. So so what that's going to do is inside the. Um, the t uh, the. Where are you? Inside the view. Mm -hmm. It's expecting an entry variable, which is already set because of the verify access, so we don't have to do anything. Right. Fab. Right. And we technically don't even really need to have the render action there. It's going to look for. It's going to look for something called entry show by default. But I got into the habit of. I got into the habit of specifying them anyway in places because there there are times when particular API responses will uh, return different things based on different conditions so I just I got into the habit of passing um, the the value template value there to the render action mm -hmm. and then here we're gonna create it and um, we're since we're since we're only creating entries that belong to ourselves right now, I'm just creating creating an entry under the currently authenticated person. Right. Authenticated as entries dot numa. Right. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And so since authenticated adds a pointer to the logged in person, mm -hmm. it just understands that dot entries is kind of like saying. The entries for this person. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah make a new one. Yeah, and this then make a new one. <laughs> yeah. For the so you don't have to set the foreign key; it just gets it. Right. If you create it under, if you create it, create it through the association, you don't have to set the foreign key. Very cool. Yeah, I, I like that about Active Record. There's still a lot of magic going on here, but it it's it's pretty great. And this is actually update attributes has actually been changed in Rails four to just update. Update attributes will still work, but you can also just do just do update. Cool. Which I personally like better. Yeah. What else would you update? <laughs> yeah. See here, I'm reusing. I'm reusing the same um the same view template. Oh right, because the update would be. It would it, by default it would look for a different template. It would by default unless you did a redirect it would look for update, because normally normally in like a like a website not not an API, the update action once it had finished successfully would have a, a redirect to show. Yeah, mm -hmm. but since we don't have one here, if you didn't specify a template, if you didn't specify to render entry show, then it would look for entries update. And when you say a redirect, would that be something visible to the user, or is that something that would happen internally on the server? Oh, uh, yeah, it's internally on the server. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, like you post, you post your, your, you fill out your form, you edit it, and you post it to um, the the server, and then you know, after after you're editing, it takes you to like like a page to view the entry or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, so that's why I got into the habit of specifying a render for the APIs because you, you know, you're not going to have things like views for, for updates and destroys and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and you're also not doing redirects, so you'll you'll want to show, usually the show action. Right. You know, isn't the show action? It's just like a JSON parse thing, right? We'll have to take a look at that next. I've got a question. 
Um, the show action. Uh, no, we're using the rabble templates, remember? Yeah, I'll have to take a look at that in a yeah. second. Yeah, and although, although after using them for a while, I switched um, switched to JBuilder. Like within the last week or two, and I think I like it better. Yeah. It it just feels like a little more flexible. Mm -hmm. Or it could. I mean. Or I should say a <laughs> a little shallower learning curve. I got you. All right. So that's pretty straightforward. Yep. All right, so I have a couple of quick questions. Um, okay. Private is just like uh, it doesn't have a close tag, right? No. So the indentation on 36 through 52 is, is that the way you usually do it? Uh, is the it... indentation is totally optional, but mm -hmm. it is pretty common to, to indent things under private. Really? Just, yeah, just because it makes it easier to read. Mm. All right, and then the... Um, mm, can we just look at entries show the entries show sure. template or view real quick? Uh yeah, I haven't made it yet, so. Oh. Well, so what I was going to ask was, right. What I was going to ask was do we really need entries index or because we're just if we're just parsing json uh on line 8. That's a good point. Just line 9 now. Yeah. Memory. That's just telling the API that the only the only content type we're going to respond to is JSON. Everything else is going to throw a, a 404. Mm -hmm. uh, no, we could we could just render. We could do that mm -hmm. instead. In fact, we could do that for on all of them, right? We could do that on all of them, but then you get into yeah, no, no, no. that's like for instance, for instance, with the people controller, mm -hmm. we don't want to do that because we don't want to expose the the hashed password and the um, access token right. all the time. Yeah, just on create. So okay, so um, cool, it makes sense. So I guess that's the next step is to make the just to to make that view, yeah. So, uh, okay, I've cleaned out all the views there that we're not going to need mm -hmm. entries. And I'm going to create a new file, and we'll call that... That'll be our index. Okay. Type of alert. Collectoin. Collectoin. <laughs> you want to show ID, name. Created at. Yeah. And do we care about an updated app? We probably don't care. No, probably not. And that will be our index it's view. It's attributes colon. No, it's not. I was going to say that looks kind of weird. Yeah, because it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it looks weird because it's wrong. Bumping colons. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty. No, there's a title. <laughs> yeah, that sounds dirty. <laughs> oh my god. All right. So, yeah, so now how uh yeah. Yeah, then we'll do the show action. How will this be different? Hang on. 
how will it be different than if we were just rendering a JSON object directly from the controller? Uh, no, that then index. Oh, oh uh, it's a single item, whereas the show is a collection of it's a it's an array of items. Gotcha, I missed that. Okay, so let's swap back to show. Uh, there you have it. Collection versus object. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. So if you were, it, that's because this is using like. Yeah, I got you now. Okay, yeah. so because what I was I was imagining would have been a pain in the butt, which is that if you if you basically take the result from the from Active Record and mm -hmm. just convert it into the JSON that you want to return, you'd have to go through and pick out the stuff that you didn't want to return. So if you do yeah, this, yeah, well, I mean, you, know, you could you could pass yeah, like in your in your um to JSON method, you could say you know accept. You can use accept or only to, to list fields, but if you have a bunch of nested objects, it gets really complicated. Yeah. Gotcha. All yeah, right, cool. In fact, I, I expect a, um, a a hitman from Infinum to come at me some dark night. <laughs> <laughs> Inside joke. So, yeah, you can uh, apologize to them for that. But <laughs> 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 yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, that... Um, that should be that. I mean, we could we could do tests for it. Let's yeah, we might as well, we should let's run the tests. Okay, yeah, we don't the... have any tests written yet. Let me oh, just right. paste some in. I could just paste some in. Well, we could just use the try the client, the HTTP client, and see if see what we happens. Could. We could. Okay. Because we already showed how to write tests. Yeah. So maybe from history you can create that person again and then Yeah. And post, yeah. Thought we deleted it. Didn't we delete it? Maybe I created it again after we deleted it. Oh right, because then we right. That's how we know it worked. <laughs> yeah. So right, TV reset. I'm gonna. I don't think I need to restart the server, but I'm going to anyway. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Now we need that access token. If you're writing a client application, you'd capture that and store it somewhere. Right. So in your subsequent requests... We'll pass it as authorization. So now, if you just did... Right, if you just do get people one... It returns me. Cool, and it doesn't have. It's so interesting. It doesn't. It doesn't, doesn't ask crap. What? It doesn't it? Doesn't have the password, hash password stuff, because we're our, it's not exposed in our Rabble template. Which is good. Yes. Yes. So if we, um, I'm surprised it doesn't have an empty entries object. Uh we didn't put one in our Rabble template. Uh Okay, so if we if we created an entry, it wouldn't show up when we retrieved a person. No, we'd have to get person one entries. I see. Oh, and we get an error. <laughs> nice. So well, that's a... see. This is this is why we should do tests. This is easier, to, much easier to read in the console than it is trying to. Yeah. Syntax error on line one. Wow, that's uh, syntax error on line twenty on the entry model on line twenty six. Let's check our entry model. Mm. 
Ta-da. Ta-da. <laughs> we totally talked about that block, too, and didn't notice that. Yeah, we did. We did. And there it's returning an empty array because we don't have any entries. Fabulous. So let's see. And we should be able to post one. That's what you're going to do next, mm -hmm. I'm sure. And yeah. we post to... Cool. Post to entries. Now that's kind of interesting because I was, I was, I think, I don't know if I was expecting it, but I wasn't sure if you'd post to people slash one. I know, I know. Yeah, where... you, like you could. I just, I don't have the route set up that way. I, I mean, I guess there are all kinds of different opinions on it, but I think mostly it comes down to personal preference. Yeah, I, I prefer what you were about to do, but I was expecting. I wasn't I wasn't sure which way we were going to do it. So what I'm talking about, in case I didn't say it clearly enough, is that, um, you know, normally we're going to interact with entries at a at a URL that has people in front of it. So like part people slash one slash entries is going to list out the entries for that person. And uh, well, check that out. You're just going to put 10 a.m. and it's going to uh, the chronic is going to put in today. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> okay what do we we have, we have name kind calories dated uh, i think that's it isn't it yeah i think so yeah yeah my my beagle <laughs> delicious beagle that's oh. a lot of calories yeah it's fat beagle <laughs> <laughs> all right so we run so that that, uh, oh, oh! I forgot to add a resource for entries to our routes. Okay. Because I have I have a nested resource for entries, but it's only for the index action. Right. So up here. See, and there I'm just gonna. Go. I've said this a bunch of times through the course of the screencasts, but this is the kind of stuff that you never. You, none of the tutorials I've ever seen, I mean, granted, they're all like Hello World ones or like how to make a to-do app, but they never, they never, they Screw always, up. <laughs> no, no, they never, well, they never do anything complicated. And, and when I say complicated, I, I don't even mean complicated. It's like they do stuff that's so trivially simple, like with one model that you don't get into any of the nesting stuff. You don't get into any like different, different ways to set up routes you definitely never get into authentication. I've literally never seen a, like an intro to Rails that did anything with authentication. And I'm sure they're out there, but I've, I've certainly never stumbled across one. So, uh, And a lot of times you have to wait. They do, since this is API specific, a lot of times they spend a lot of time in the views and we don't care about that here. So right. it's, it's very off-putting. And that's why we're the best. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what did I call that make instead of name? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I was getting an error saying no attribute name. It's like, wait, there is one. <laughs> no, I called it make. <laughs> <laughs> because I was talking and typing at the same time. Yeah. We'll just make a migration to fix that. Cool. Don't forget your migrations. Uh -huh. I don't care about a down action, so. See, now here's another thing that you wouldn't. It's the kind of thing you could get yourself in trouble with, and you didn't have no way. You'd just be searching all over. How do I get myself out of this? So we're just creating a quick migration to drop that stupid make column <laughs> <laughs> and create a name column. There you go. All right. And it is remove column and not drop column. That gets me quite often because mm. the MySQL syntax is actually uh, drop, I believe. Yeah. And I don't think I have to restart the server, but 
What the heck? We will anyway. It only takes a moment, right? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Our 8,000 calorie beagle. Ta da! Oh, they did, didn't work. ID didn't work. No, it still didn't create. God. Yeah. All right, well, now we, we were trying to skirt the tests, but... Mm, we were trying to. Damn people, kind of food. Yeah, it could just be we're just like we send something in wrong, like the wrong name, typo in the string. Does it, did it say what the error was? I'm, I'm seeing the... Uh, bash terminal window yeah no it does not that is a um, validation error which means it's name kind calories for create set dated so if it was me I would comment out all of the validates just to see if it was a true error or not but No, this is also smart. So if it saves, then great. And if it doesn't, then entry errors are just an active record thing. It's just entry dot errors, I believe. And that's yeah. like an active record. Thing. <clears throat> yeah. It's not included on the list. Boy, that's helpful. Um, pretty sure it is. <laughs> is it? Oh, what? Mm. Just change it. Just, just put presence true for now, just to see if. My syntax wrong here. There should be a W there. That's a word list. Gotcha. There's probably some really yeah. so. So screen. yeah, that's that's how you would do the error output, and you should actually you should probably really do that for everything. But yeah, that's cool. That's super helpful. All right, I give up. <laughs> It says 200. I think it was just not updating the the uh, result body, wasn't it? No, these are parentheses, not curly braces. Boy, that simple shorthand syntax really made things easier. <laughs> yeah, it did, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Just kill that line and see what yeah, it, see if it works. Gonna... If people want to screw up their entries, they can. There we go. And there was much rejoicing. There was much Yay. rejoicing. I'm doing something wrong in my short, in my short simple syntax there. Hmm. Did it change or something between three and four? Uh, I'm not running four on this for this. This is right. I mean, are you thinking of? Well, it's not. I this mean, is a Ruby thing, not a Rails thing. Yeah, actually. I mean, unless I unless I've accidentally got my shell set to Ruby to Ruby 2.0 instead of 1.9.3, and something's changed, but I don't think I do. Well, we can leave that as an exercise to the dear listener. They get the idea. Yeah. But yeah, I mean that's that's it. We could go ahead and we could continue to write tests and debug and stuff, but Yeah, no, that's it. Like it works, right? That's everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Good job, Kelly. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we should definitely um uh put this somewhere, uh maybe on mm -hmm. GitHub or something. Yeah, actually, I already have it. I have it on GitHub as a private repo. I just need to uh, make it public. Cool. We should 
uh, yeah, like with whatever changes we made today and posted yeah. on, uh, posted in the show notes. Yeah. Fantastic. So, yeah. and I'll include some tests for the, the, I'll include the rest, include the rest of the tests for the entry entries as well. So cool. And, um, yeah, that's that. I mean, there are, um, like I said, since Rails 4 came out, I've uh, made a little bit of changes in the way I do things, and I've been um, reading up on RSpec and that kind of stuff. And um, so I've got a couple of I got a couple of resources um, that we can also post in the show notes um, that will, uh, you know, hopefully make you make you a better better Ruby developer. And one of them one of them is um, GitHub's. Uh, Ruby style guide, which they released recently, which is actually uh, very good. I like it a lot. Hmm, cool. A lot of a lot of good good info in there. And the other one is um, betterspecs.org, which is all about writing R spec tests that that don't suck like the ones that in here currently do. <laughs> and you will read it, and then you will then you will laugh at me. But um, yeah, you know, read it and and, and get better. So. Awesome. Well, I mean, you're always, everybody's always on a learning curve somewhere. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. So that is our show for this week. I'm Jonathan Stark. And I'm Kelly Shaver. And we hope you join us again next week for the Niche Podcast. Bye. Bye.